Hey YouTube, welcome to a new video. It's been a while. Uh, and in this one, we'll be going over creating some geometric style art based on the uh, work by uh, Joe Riba. Um, he's on Instagram and I'll put his profile somewhere up here. Uh, and he makes very cool stuff. And I thought to myself, hey, this looks very cool. And I want to know if I can make this myself using geometry notes and some shading techniques. So I decided to make a tutorial out of it for uh, you guys. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, then please leave a like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon for further notifications on future videos that I make. Also, um, if you decide to make this yourself, then please share with me on Instagram. It's always cool to see what you guys create with my uh, tutorials. And I wanna point out that the project files for this video are available on my Gumroad for just $2. So let's get started. All right, so I've opened up a new Blender scene. And uh, for starters, we are going to delete the light and camera here. So uh, select them, hit X and choose OK. Now we want to scale down our cube. So we are going to open up the item menu here, the transform with the N on the keyboard. And we are going to change the scale for the cube. Uh, I want a, a one by one meter cube. So I'm going to use a scale of 0.5, type that in. Now it's one by one and make sure to apply the scale. So hit control A and apply scale here. Now it's uh, one in scale and one by one in meters. Now let's tap into edit mode here and let's go into face select with uh, the number three on our keyboard. Select the top face here. Let's just close off this menu real quick. And now we want to extrude each of these faces. So hit E and type in one. Select another face, hit E again, type in one and enter two. Confirm that and let's do that for all the faces. All right, so we end up with this, uh, this object over here and um, that's all the modeling we are going to do, so super easy. Um, and we are just going to use some uh, shading tricks here to get a cool effect. So let's go to the shading tab, close off these uh, two windows over here. And we already got a material uh, applied here, so I'm just going to change the name. I'm going to call it random colors. Now, what we effectively want to do is uh, assign a random color to each of these faces. And to do that, we first need to UV unwrap our model. So let's go to the UV editing window here and make sure to select our entire model. So hit A. Um, it's already got a UV map, but we don't use this one. So hit U and then choose the light map pack. Now what this will do is um, it will give you all separated UV islands like so for each face. Now we just need to do one final thing here and that's select all of our uh, UVs here with A. Let's change the pivot point or I should say the origin to individual origins. And now let's hit S and type in zero. So each of the faces will be scaled down to one single point on the UV space, automatically assigning a color to that as well. Okay, so let's hop on over back to shading here and let's start working on our material. First of all, we are going to add in a color ramp. So shift A and look up a color ramp here. Next, we wanna add in a UV map node and open up our UV map there. And let's just go ahead and plug that into the color ramp and see what happens. Okay, so we get some gray tones and you can see there's a difference in the colors already, um, which is sort of the effect we are going for. And if we uh, pull these in, I'm going to go for like a 0.3 on the black and a 0.6-ish on the white value. You see we get a lot more contrast going. Okay, so next we want to pull the first color ramp to the side a bit and add in a second color ramp. Now let's, let's change this from uh, linear to constant and we'll get back to it later. Now let's preview our UV map by control shift clicking on the UV map node and you can easily see that we get different colors for each face. However, some of them are fairly uh, similar and that's because they are sort of close in the uh, UV space here. So now let's go back to our regular material. So control shift click the uh, principled BSDF and let's add in a, a noise texture in between the UV map and the color ramp. Now, if we uh, enable this and it loads, you see we automatically get way more different colors. Now, if we change the scale to 100 and turn the detail down to zero, we get a even better effect. Now, obviously we only have two colors in our final color ramp here, and we will require more, um, and we can just change these, as you can see here. So like this, and the more colors we add to our color ramp, the more different uh, colors we get. And I'm going to use a color palette for that. So I'm going to open up a new window here and uh, switch that to the image editor. Now, if we uh, go to Google and look up Adobe Color, um, we can open up the Adobe Color website, which will give you loads of inspiration for color palettes. So if we go over here to explore and then filter it for something like popular, so you can change it 
uh, somewhere over here. Yeah, so popular. You get all these popular color palettes. Now, I've just chosen one for myself, uh, which is this one. So if you click on it, you can uh, take a screenshot and use that to color pick in uh, Blender. So I've already done that, saved my image somewhere. Go ahead and find a color palette that fits your taste. Now I'm gonna open it up like so. And now we get all of these colors, so super easy. I'm just gonna pull the blue value all the way to the back and I'm just gonna add a few more of these colors in here. So uh, I need five for my uh, project here. Now I'm gonna change the values here so they are evenly separated. So 0.2 for the first one, 0.4 for that one, 0.6 for this one and 0.8 for the final one. Now we can just go ahead and uh, pick all the colors for each of these like so and we are done. So that's all the uh, color ramp stuff we need to do here. Um, but we want to change one final thing and that is if we now duplicate this object with Shift D, uh, you can see they are completely identical. And uh, I don't want that, I want each object to have separate textures. So I'm going to use the uh, object info node and put it over there, which has the random value, which gives a random seed to each object you spawn in. And we are going to combine this with our UV map with a math node. And let's just plug that in real quick and make sure to set your math node to add and uh, don't enable clamp. And now if you duplicate the objects, you can see they are all unique. Now, finally, I'm gonna add in some slight bump here and some uh, roughness. Uh, so I get a slightly more interesting texture going. Let's just change our render engine to cycles, GPU compute. I can use low samples because of the uh, simple texture and scene we have. I'm gonna use denoising from optics, change our color management to have high contrast. And finally, in performance, I'm gonna go for 256, 256 tiles, which is best for my computer. Now for the bump and roughness, let's first add in a noise texture again, like so. And let's look up a color ramp as well. Plug that into the color ramp and plug the color ramp into the roughness value. Now let's duplicate our color ramp with shift D and plug the noise texture in that again and plug this one into the height of the bump node. Now we get something. It's not pretty just yet. Let's change uh, our texture coordinates to object. Now, um, I did this by hitting Control T with the noise texture selected. And if that doesn't work for you, to make sure uh, you go into add-ons, into preferences there, and look up the Node Wrangler add-on and make sure it is enabled. Now I'm gonna set the detail all the way to 16, roughness to a value of like 0.65. And I'm just gonna tweak the sliders on the bump color ramp first until I get more contrast, something like so. And then I'm gonna change it to B-spline. So the effect is way more gradual. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. And finally, let's just go ahead and decrease the uh, strength there in our bump node to 0.2. So very subtle, um, but I like it. Now let's do the same for the roughness sliders here. So let's just increase those. And I'm gonna change my black value uh, to something very light gray. So we get some roughness difference, um, but none of the object is very reflective. Now, finally, I wanna add in a bevel modifier, set the amount to 0.01 and these segments to three, right click the object and hit shade smooth. And that's done. Our object is completed and we now have these smooth edges going, which I think look a bit better. Now let's go into our world settings here. I'm gonna change the color, so the background color here to the light sand color uh, I got in my color palette here. Um, but do feel free to change this to whatever color you want. Now let's hop on over to our layout tab here and move our object uh, out of our view. So let's just move it to the side somewhere. It doesn't really matter where, as long as it's not in our view anymore. And now let's get started on our geometry nodes. So uh, super easy, we are going to add in a plane. So shift a plane and let's hit new to create a new geometry node system. Now we can take the uh, the first node over here, the group input and just delete it. And let's add in a grid here. So I'll plug that into the group output and we get sort of a plane again, I guess. Um, however, this one is already subdivided with vertices um, and has a certain size, which is good for us. So let's add in a point instance node next. And let's select our cube object to spawn there. 
Now, this doesn't look too good just yet. And that's because the size of our grid is wrong. So let's just change the size here. And you can see we get some nice spacing here. Now, I want to change the vertices to 5 on uh, both axes. So I get the... Uh, amount of objects that I want and now I'm going to change the size to 12 um, to get it to fit exactly. Um, make sure you test this out by just dragging and holding shift until you get the uh, desired size here. Uh, in my case 12 is perfect and if we go into wireframe we can check if they actually uh, line up and they do so that's good. So this is the uh, the grid all done and if we go into material preview you can see we have all these random objects with random colors uh, and it's already starting to look pretty cool. Now if we add in a uh, attribute vector math node in between the point instance and the grid there we can actually go ahead and animate this. So let's open up a, a new window here and change it to the timeline and let's start animating our object. Now I'm going to change the B attribute to vector and I'm going to change the A attribute to rotation and the result to rotation as well. Now if we change the vector value we actually rotate our objects individually so uh, that's pretty cool and let's just animate this. So hover over the vector there on the first keyframe and hit I. Now let's go to frame 50 next. Now let's just change this value until we get a full rotation. Now this is a value of 1.57. I don't know why, but it is. And make sure to keyframe that with I again. You can obviously use different rotations. With the plane selected, I can actually see the keyframes here. I'm just going to change it to 40. Um, and then I'm going to take a pause for 15 frames. So I'm going to copy the keyframes from 40 to 55. So we get 15 frames of nothing. And now I want to add in a second rotation. So 40 frames again, which brings us to 95. And I'm going to add on the bottom value there, a value of 1.57 as well and keyframe it. Now let's hit I again and let's just preview this. And now we get two different rotations, uh, two different sides. So uh, let's just add another pause of 15 frames again, duplicate the keyframes there. So nothing happens. Let's add another 40. And now I'm going to double the amount on the first rotation, so 3.14, and hit I again. So now we have these three rotations. And I think it's starting to look pretty neat. Just add another pause here. And for our final rotation, I'm going to bring everything back to zero. So add another 40 keyframes there, and just select all three of these, and then hit zero. And I, of course, to insert the keyframe. Now, if we add another 15 frames here, uh, we get to 220. So that's the end of our animation to get it to loop. And finally, I want to select all the keyframes here, hit T and choose the Bezier interpolation. So we get a uh, smoother animation uh, with some speeding up and some slowing down in it. All right, so what's next? Next, uh, we are done with our geometry nodes here and we are going to uh, finalize our scene here. So let's go over to the layout again, hit numpad 7 to go into top view and let's add in our camera, so shift A camera. Hit numpad 0 to go into camera view and let's open up our camera properties here and change it from perspective to orthographic. All right, so now let's change our uh, value here to 15. Um, because that's the right size to completely fill our camera here. I'm going to change the aspect ratio to 1920 times 1920, which is uh, perfect for uh, social media and stuff like that. Uh, and you can obviously still use the cropped version for a regular video for YouTube and stuff. All right, so that's that. So 1920 times 1920. I'm going to change the FPS to 30. And that's our render properties. Now, if we go into uh, render view, you will see black. That's because our camera is below our object. So let's just move it up, go into render view again, and you should be fine. All right, so now let's light our scene. First of all, I'm going to add in a uh, area light, and I'm just gonna rename our object real quick so I don't lose track of what's going on here. So I'm gonna change the cube to the uh, um, cube object, and the plane can go to geometry node system, and our Area light will be called fill light because it will fill our scene. And let's just go ahead and move this up. Um, so I'm gonna go into front view here with numpad one and sort of line it up with our camera there. Now I'm gonna increase the size here to 
something close to 15 uh, so it's uh, the same size or slightly bigger than our camera uh, because we wanted to fill our entire scene now let's amp up the power here to a thousand watts or so um, maybe tweak that later on and let's add in our second light so shift a i'm going to add in a sun lamp for this one now i'm just going to pull it to the side even though it doesn't change the actual lighting um, but it helps me see what I'm doing and I'm going to rotate it on the Y. So hit R Y 90. So it completely faces to the side and then R Z and make sure to point it downward like 35 degrees seeing from the top angle. Now you won't be able to tell something's happening because it's shining all the way from the back. So let's just point it downwards from the front view with numpad one. And now we get some shadows going. Now I'm just going to rotate it on the Z axis again, because I want the shadow to line up between um, these two squares there and this is I guess this is pretty good um, I've got the sun lamp strength set to 5 now um, but you still get some shadows on the objects on the other side and that's because it's not pointed down enough so into front view again with numpad 1 I'm just going to point it down slightly more I do this by clicking on the yellow dot there and then just dragging it down now let's rotate it again on the z-axis from the top view make sure it lines up and now we get these contrasted shadows there, um, perfectly halving our squares. I think that looks uh, very neat. Now for the uh, final uh, render settings there, I have 32 samples, cycles, GPU compute, denoising on optics, 256 on the performance for the tile size. And obviously I've got color management set to high contrast. All right, so that's one. And for the output properties, I've set it to 1920 times 1920, so a square format. Uh, 30 FPS and finally let's choose a output location so choose a safe location of your choice change the uh, file format to FFmpeg video the container type in encoding can go to mp4 and the output quality is going to perceptually lossless now and that should be all and we can go to render and hit render animation all right so this is the end result I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it was uh, educational and if it was then please leave a like, subscribe or comment down below, uh, it's always great to hear from you guys. Now if you do decide to make this yourself then share with me on Instagram, I, I love to see your work. Uh, and I want to point out that the uh, project files for this video are available on my Gumroad for just $2. See you in the next one!